Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Wednesday, May 31st. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Indiana game is in 94 days. The game against Michigan in 178 days. We are here at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. I'm joined by Kevin Noon of BuckeyeHuddle.com. We just got uh, a little oasis in the college football desert, the Ohio State media desert. Between the end of sp the spring game, we had not talked to anyone really affiliated with the program in any sort of official interview capacity. And then on uh, Tuesday, our wonderful friends in the sports information department said, oh, you want interviews? Smoke the whole pack. Here's, here's every on-field assistant coach, plus Mickey Marotti. And see you in August. <laughs> We'll, we'll see him in uh, we'll see him soon at the uh, at the uh, camps that'll be going on at the Woody next week but you know it was it was a real uh, a real fire hose of information it was young guys always talk about drinking through a fire hose the first uh, the first few days of uh, their Ohio State careers in the first spring in Ohio State that was kind of the interviews we got a lot from everyone I almost don't know where to start I guess we can start with uh, oh let's start with Brian Hartline the Ohio State offense you know he you were over there you got to talk to him this was this was uh, at times like six different interview, interviews going on at the same time so you and Tony and I were kind of running around all the different tables you got a chance to talk to Brian Hartline I did not so what did you learn talking to Brian Hartline Ohio State has good wide receivers hmm. big if true big if true and you know that's really the big thing there Brian Hartline assuming the OC role certainly asked questions about that I mean how does he approach things what did he learn coming you know, coming out of the spring game, was it different than what he expected? He was asked some some questions that were more a little schematic about, uh, you know, with this depth of wide receivers that you have, why don't you sit there and run more four wideouts, run more 10 personnel? And, of course, you certainly have issues with that, especially when you're looking at an offensive line that's replacing some new guys, and it doesn't do you any good if you can't block the guys. And additionally, on top of that, you only have so much practice time if you practice something, especially more than a gadgety play or something, you better mm -hmm. run it because mm -hmm. you don't have, this isn't the NFL, you just don't have this glut of time of where you can have just this thick binder of plays and go through it. Everything that you go through needs to be something that you're either using or that you can build off of, but a lot of excitement about what's in the room, a lot of anticipation for the upcoming season. And, and Brian Hartline also was asked about being on the road now as the OC as opposed to the wide receiver coach. And, you know, it's still, you know, he's still very well received regardless of what, you know, what hat it is that he's wearing. But, you know, now he's having to talk to more guys where, you know, he's still involved with the wide receivers, certainly in putting together epic classes. But now you're talking to that offensive tackle. You're talking to that running back. All of that is part of you know part of the game now. Yeah, you're you are touching more directly on the careers of more different players as the coordinator than you were as the position coach, and that's even more true. You go up another level to the head coach, and then congratulations, you're in charge of everyone. So, uh, you know, the idea of not being able to waste practice time is an interesting one because we were talking to Tony Gerdeman earlier uh, before, right before we hit record on this show. And he had been over with Parker Fleming, the special teams coordinator. And he said one of the things that he heard from Parker Fleming was, you are seeing teams that don't practice kick returns anymore because they go into a game knowing we're not going to waste time practicing kick returns because we're just going to fair catch it. We're not going to worry about it this week because we're not going to try and return against this team. So that gives us more time to work on our punt coverage or a punt return or something else where you might be able to make an impact play. Maybe you're working on a special punt block that week and you're spending that practice time working on that instead of the kick return. It's You have this limited resource and, you know, Ohio State football players and coaches spend a lot of time in this building behind us, but you do have limits, NCAA limits, on the amount of time you can spend on practicing on the field with coaches and footballs. So it is a sort of limited, finite resource in terms of what you've got in terms of time to practice and work on all these things and if you're going to practice something you'd better use it because otherwise you're wasting you know this this very precious resource you have another thing that i talked to you were while you were talking to brian hartline i was talking to tony alford about that running back room and just the incredible depth he has in that running back room where you got five guys who are coming back who are proven veteran guys coming back who all of whom have played at the college level all of whom have performed at the college level and now you've got five of these guys, and I, you know, I kind of asked him. You know, is it, I, I assume that's a good thing. It's not. It's not a bad thing to have that kind of depth. But how do you sort of, you know, are you are you looking to find different ways to use these because How do you, you know, we, we've talked to him before about, you know, it's not his job to keep guys happy. But, you know, how are you trying to allocate all the, that time? Allocate the the limited number of carries you have. And it just 
you know, they're looking for roles for guys. You know, this guy might be better in a goal line situation. This guy might be better in, hey, maybe you have a pass passing package. We're running this guy. We're doing, you know, or because you're going to rotate a couple guys, but you're not going to rotate. You're not going to have five guys each taking one drive, or you're going to have guys playing a drive and a half every game, and that that doesn't work either. So uh, I thought that was that was interesting. I'm mean, not a surprise, but. One of those things you kind of uh, get an update on him uh, with that about. Well, and you look at last year, and they ran out of running backs. Mm-hmm. I mean, you sit there, and Evan Pryor gets hurt going into mm-hmm. the season, and you know this depth that you think that you have, you you lose it. As I mean, it's a it's a physical, violent sport, and mm-hmm. guys get hurt along the way. And uh, I was going through and just watching some games from last season, just as I was kind of ramping up for coming back into the Woody and being able to talk to coaches, and it's just like. Wow, how different would it have been if they would have had this guy, or how different would this game have been if they would have had that guy? And generally, you know, Ohio State wins a hell of a lot more than it loses. But you look at the games that Ohio State loses, and you know, generally one of the common themes is the lack of the running game. So having the five mm-hmm. guys and being able to build off of that, you just have to find a way to keep all five guys engaged throughout. And you know, Travion Henderson is one of those guys who missed a bunch of time. He was banged up, I think, more than people maybe realized during the course of the fall. And then again at the end of the year, you saw him against uh, Maryland at the end of the year. A at- special guest right there, hey, Jim, Knowles, Jim Knowles, defensive coordinator. <laughs> um, okay, we'll get to defense in a minute. I did want to finish my thought on Travion Henderson. Uh, we will. Um, we'll, we, you know, Travion talked. Uh, Travion had the Maryland you're, you're, game. You're, you're, fl- game. you're flustered. Yeah. Well, sorry, my brain just went. <laughs> Went over to the defensive side of the ball. Um, the, yeah, they got that Maryland game where he had that long reception for a touchdown uh, in, what, the first drive, second drive, something like that. And then, but was like very clearly compromised, couldn't play, didn't play against Michigan. I mean, he's someone who you come into this year, he's get, you know, it's not really a something to prove year for him, but I think that was probably a very frustrating year for him. And, you know, you're coming into what could be a contract year. He's someone who, you know, you saw you saw the best of Mayan Williams last year. He was banged up too, but when he was healthy, you saw the best of Mayan Williams. It feels like you have an opportunity to maybe see the best of Travion Henderson this year as well. Well, and let's remember last year, Travion Henderson, game two, the foot injury and everything else, and it just all, it all kind of falls apart. And it's like, okay, you're you're healthy and then you just you get banged up and you just are you're not able to build any sort of momentum and it's such a momentum based position that's why more than any other position riding the hot hand is so applicable when we're talking about running backs and when you know Trevion Henderson gets it going and then he gets slowed down Mayan Williams certainly had his moments Chip train him and then you know of course we could get into uh with um I'm just drawing uh, a blank. Down Hayden. Down Hayden, yeah. With, 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 with Dallin Hayden, and he goes to Maryland and has this huge game, and then mm-hmm. we don't see him in we don't see him <laughs> in the Michigan game mm-hmm. for whatever for whatever reason. But uh, I, you know, I've I really think that this is going to be a big year for for Trevion Henderson. I don't I don't know if we're going to see somebody who's going to be a 1500 yard back just mm-hmm. with the amount of guys they have. And you are going to ride the hot hand, and you've got. Three guys who very well are playing their final seasons for Ohio State and what kind of comes of that. But um, you know, I was talking to a buddy who writes nationally, and he was like, you know, pick one of the three Ohio State backs. I'm doing, you know, top five <laughs> for Big Ten. And I'm mm-hmm. like, well, I can make an argument for all three of mm-hmm. them. But, you know, if you want to if you want to sit there and take the safest pick, take Trevion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tre- Trevion Henderson is an, a one where you can pick that, and I don't think anyone can go, that's a stupid pick because, you know, you had the five-star pedigree, you had the freshman year last year. You had the step back, but you, very obvious injuries you can point to. So yeah, I think he he feels like he's this maybe the safest of the picks uh, of those five of those guys. But man, he, there is some there is some real talent and some real depth there. Uh, another spot where there's some real talent and, and real depth is on the defensive line. And uh, Larry Johnson, I spent a bunch of time talking to Larry Johnson, and we'll do, I'll probably do a show later in the weeks where you get to hear a bunch from him because he was he was great. Justin Fry was great. Talked to him a bunch. I'll probably let you guys hear a bunch from them directly later on in the week. But I'll kind of give you a quick synopsis of a couple things. Uh, one with Larry Johnson was just the, the young guys coming in and the difference between coming in as a true freshman as an edge player and coming in as a true freshman as an interior player and how just how much those guys on the inside get get hammered on and how much there's so much more strength and uh, you know strength and, and weight training kind of stuff that you got to do to get ready physically for the the pounding you're going to take on the interior of that defensive line much more than the outside because you've got you got some more space to work with outside right. and so you know when you look at I, I said 
you're going to have the edge cases. You're going to have the guys who are, you know, just physical freaks or come in in incredible shape or whatever. But by and large, do you kind of look at the interior guys as you sort of assume these guys are going to take a year before they're ready to make any, you know, real meaningful contribution? He said, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of how you have to look at it. It's kind of a little like the offensive line where it's just... There's, you need to get physically so much stronger and be ready for the pounding you're gonna take. That's just, it's unlike what you're getting at the high school level, no matter where you're playing high school. That, that's, when you're looking at those young guys at the, in the interior of the defensive line, you gotta kinda just be patient there. Well, and a lot of times in high school, guys get miscast. Mm-hmm. You, well, you're one of our better athletes. We're gonna play you outside because we have to play you outside. Mm-hmm. So you're a little miscast. You get in, the, you know, the, get, the players are bigger, faster, stronger, you know, all of the, all of the platitudes are there. Mm-hmm. And there is a learning process. There is a physical development process, you know, especially on the interior line. You know, me, me talking about anybody being, you know, the bad body weight is probably very unfair. But, you know, you got to reshape some of these bodies. There's a, there are a lot more guys who come out and find immediate success mm-hmm. on the outside than the inside. That's mm-hmm. the very you know, very rare find of finding that guy that's going to do that. And even when that's the case, you sometimes wonder, is is that a case of him? Has he already hit his ceiling? Mm-hmm. I mean, is, is, has he maxed out or whatever? So you know, I don't know if I necessarily want that defensive tackle, that three or that one that comes in and just immediately plays like he's been mm-hmm. there because where do you go from there? Yeah, and one of, one of the ways they're kind of getting around that because they were, there was a little question about the depth in the interior of the defensive line. They bring in a transfer, Taiwan Malone, out of Ole Miss. He played a couple years at Ole Miss, didn't play a ton, but as Larry Johnson pointed out, he was also playing baseball. So now this is the first year he's not going to be playing baseball. He's just going to be focused solely on football. He's had that couple years in the weight room. He's maybe a little more game ready coming in to provide, you know, they're not relying on him to be a starter. They've got, you know, you've got three guys at the very least who you feel very, very good about in the interior of that defensive line, Ty Lake Williams, Ty Hamilton, and Mike Hall. If he's that fourth guy, great. You've got Jaden McKenzie, you've got Hero Kanu, you've got other bodies on the interior of that defensive line. You've got Caden McDonald coming in this summer again. He's a true freshman, probably we'll see it in a year basically, but you know, he's someone who comes in, gives you that veteran depth, gives you, if the other three guys all leave, and they might after this year, then he's your starter potentially next year. Hero, you know, he it takes a little bit of the pressure off Hero Kanu, who, you know, came from Germany and has only been playing football for a few years. He doesn't have to necessarily be ready to jump into that too deep this year. If he's ready, great. If he's not, that's okay. You have another you have another body there and you know, someone who has been playing at a high level in the SEC. That's that feels like a great example of how Ohio State has used the transfer portal to, you know, it's not not everyone is going to be Justin Fields coming into the transfer portal, but that could be potentially be a really important addition for Ohio State. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Ohio State have to go back to the portal for the 24 season Mm -hmm. because the scenario that you do mention about Ohio State potentially losing three interior linemen is highly plausible, in my opinion. And that's not me saying I'm endorsing it, saying that all three of them should jump. We haven't seen the season. We don't have the the gift of hindsight, but we kind of know where things are going in terms of longevity of careers and things of that nature so that does, that wouldn't surprise me so bringing in Taiwan Malone certainly is a huge get for them and it doesn't put as much pressure as you say on a hero canoe or somebody or even even you know, somebody who's like a, a first year guy like uh, Cade McDonald or somebody like that. Well that is just a small handful of the things that we got to talk to the coaches about uh, on uh, Tuesday afternoon in the Woody Hayes. Boy, I had to think for a second what day it was. Uh, it has been a, it's been a week already. Uh, but that was that was a small handful of the uh, things we got to talk about with those guys. And, of course, you, uh, Tony Gardman and I did a live episode of Buckeye Weekly immediately after, so you can find that on YouTube and in the Buckeye Weekly feed. We talked a bunch about C.J. Hicks, about Sonny Styles, about the quarterback position, a whole bunch of stuff. I think we, I think we did a pretty good job not overlapping. That was good. Uh, these two shows, so uh, the 7.30 show is completely different from the 9.30 show. Enjoy the video. Don't forget to tip your waitress. The 9:30 show is a little more. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say blue, but that's a bad word around yeah, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tony, Tony works a maze. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it is. Uh, so you you can find that on the uh, Buckeye Weekly podcast feed uh, or on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Buckeye Huddle. And uh, we will have uh, coming up later this week. Going to have a bunch of uh, those 
interview shows with some of the coaches where we, we give you some, let you hear kind of directly from the coaches without without us filtering through the information, give you, because uh, there was a lot of great stuff. Uh, Justin Fry went for like half an hour. Uh, Larry Johnson went for like 25 minutes. And then, but we got a chance to talk to just about everyone. So there's some great, great stuff. Uh, today's special guest, Jim Knowles, I'm sure you'll be hearing from him. He had some great stuff to say as well. So we'll have all that coming up a little later on this week on uh, Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning. But uh, for now, thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day, and we will talk to you tomorrow.